Hi right, guys, uh, welcome to another installment of Local DBA Tutor. Today I'm gonna um, pick up on, um, I'm gonna focus on performance tuning for Oracle Rack. Um, and basically, I'm just gonna cover um, some of the things that you should consider in terms of the Rack performance. So, basically, uh, again, in terms of um, Rack performance tuning, uh, there are two approaches you can take. Um, one is you can actually go from the top down and the second one is you can go from the bottom up. Uh, from the top down, uh, this is the top down uh, example. So basically what you're doing here is you're going to be looking out for um, basically your goal is going to be to maximize the, the throughput and to minimize the response time. Again, I'm, when I say response time, of course I'm referring to the application, the runtime for application. So one the things that you'd be looking out for is basically you be um, you be um, using uh, just again you be using certain tools to uh, to do that to do that monitoring. So one of the tools that you'd be using is uh, Green Control. Uh, basically, um, with green, with in Green Control, you, you have access to a tab, the performance tab, and that's where you be able to um, view the performance and we can view view the queries that are that are um, taking up most amount of time and causing. Um, uh, and, and, and eating up all the resources. And then <coughs> another tool that you'll be using is the stat pack or AWR. Um, and again, with, uh, with with this tool, basically, um, like some of them, no, number one is are not lack of water, so they will only work on a single node environment. But I think the uh, most up to date ones, I think starting from, uh, I think 11, 11G, I might be wrong, but 11G or 10G, and those ones are actually lack of water, meaning that it's gonna show you, it's gonna show you, um, yeah, if it doesn't look, it's gonna be if it, if it doesn't look into uh, at the performance of the uh, of all the nodes uh, that are part of your environment. And some of the things that you be looking that you be looking out for, um, <coughs> some of the components that you be looking out for, are basically you be looking at uh, looking at the CPU, uh, how much CPU is being used, how much I/O you have, um, uh, basically how much what's what's going on with your interconnect. Again, these are the three most important components in terms of uh, in terms of the rack performance tuning. Uh, once you're able to configure it, these three, um, you know, up to, uh, you know uh, to optimal values for your for your environment, then basically um, you know everything else um, you know will sort of uh, fall in line. And uh, and also there are some tools that are, are just uh, that are um, that are not, that are not native to Oracle. Um, you have a, a tool called Live123, and you also have another tool called uh, Mbox Cut Devil. Again, those are those are just monitoring tools for your uh, for your rack environment. And again, this is the uh, again this is basically what you'd be looking at in terms of the top down approach to your performance tuning. And then also you have a you have the bottom up approach. Uh, basically, what you're doing here is you're just maximizing your utilization. But back to my utilization, what I'm referring to is basically just again some of the common components that I mentioned earlier: the CPU, the I/O. Um, basically, what you're doing here, what you're doing more of it here is basically what you're doing is you are um, you're gonna be reviewing this the uh, the spindle. Uh, basically, what a spindle is is the um, you know it's the it's this it's the axis that that the, that the hardest spins on. So uh, again, from the bottom up, it's more you focus more on things that are. You know, that, are, that are physical to the um, to your um, to the uh, to the to the, to the, the um, software setup. You want to be focusing on a controller. Um, basically, again, what a controller is, it's just a uh, it's a circuit um, that enables the CPU, the communication between the CPU and the hard disk. Uh, if you're able to uh, optimize um, optimize this process, then you would have, you know. Um, you have um, less latency and then you have uh, high performance. Uh, and then also one of the uh, final, uh, an another thing that you should you should look out for again going from the bottom up is the tabs. Basically, uh, you what you're supposed to do here is you're supposed to uh, just again um, sort of create um, uh, failover paths or, or or multi multi. You're supposed to multi like have multi threaded paths. For your um, from the CPU to the storage devices, you know, using different um, components like you know switches and buses. Uh, basically, if you're able to uh, sort of um, you know better 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 lay better lay out um, the, this these paths, then again you would have that would result in a high performance for your in your back environment. 
and then in terms of the OS level, uh, basically you be uh, you need to be you need to be looking at the um, the I/O wait times, um, uh, the queues, uh, you know, uh, the network latency, and you know the memory, and then the CPU, uh, and this is pretty much it in terms of the bottom up. And again, these are just some of the things that you need to watch closely. Uh, you need to you need to um, watch the uh, the, the manual segment space space management. So again, this is this goes back to how you have your uh, how you have your environment configured. So uh, it's actually it's actually advised not to have a um, a manual SSM configuration, but you have but you have a ASSM uh, configuration. Um, basically, um, uh, if you have a manual one, you, you know you'd be responsible for you know different different uh, parameters like CLIS groups of CLIS. Um, but if you have uh, if you have it done if you have it done automatically, then basically that'll be the software is going to be software is going to take care of the of the of the management for the for the segment space. And again, segment space goes back to the, uh, the architecture of Oracle, where basically you have a block, you have an extent, you have a segment that's part of a table space, and then you have a table space. So um, again, it's advised to just um, set this configuration to auto automatic to to, to auto. Uh, another item to watch out for is uh, is the wait event. Um, basically, if you look at um, if if you once you review the, the report, you're gonna see it's gonna say GC. That's actually just referring to uh, you know again some things that are related to the interconnect or to the cluster. Uh, that's gonna let you know, hey, uh, you know, this is what's going on in my back environment. And then, in terms of your, uh, in terms of your indexes, um, basically, what you what you have to do with your indexes, in, you know, uh, in terms of in, in relation to your back environment, you have to uh, basically actually make sure that you have a reverse order indexing um, enabled. What it's gonna do, it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna uh, reduce the uh, amount of block contention for um, for reads. Uh, so basically, um, and um, again, uh, that's just a recommendation um, to have uh, for you to have a uh, for you to have a high performance back environment. And also, um, you have to uh, look out. You have to look out. You have to go. Into, you have to make sure that you're monitoring your, your sequences. Uh, so basically, with sequence, with sequence, what you're doing is you wanna um, you don't wanna have a um, you don't wanna have a a, a um, sequence caching that's that's too that's too large. Um, again, you, what you want to do is you want to you want to have a a low value a low value for 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 the, for, for uh, sequence caching. And basically, have, what's what that's going to do is that's going to allow for again what again it goes to, it goes back to the concept of if you have individual nodes that are let's say you have sequences in the two nodes, um, and then again you might have a reading contention. So. Uh, if you have a cache that's too that's too large, that's gonna lead to an um, to a greater contention because on uh, node one, the sequence in node one and node one are, gon are not gonna be uh, are not gonna be fully aware of what's going on with node two. Um, with, with might might sort of be um, intertwined with with, uh, with node two, and then you you will have a scenario where the sequences are gonna be are gonna be all all matched, all sort of like meshed up, and you you want to avoid that. You could just have a um, a low value for your sequence caching, so that each node, uh, each each sequence caching is it like each sequence each the sequence on each, on each node is able to refer to that to the individual caches caches, and get the right sequence uh, that is supposed to be used for um, the sequencing. So that's just a recommendation for uh, in terms of your sequences. And then uh, again, this is another tip to consider. Uh, basically, in terms of um, Monitoring your uh, rack environment, it's actually advised that you parallelize. So basically, what you be doing here is you just you're executing. What you're doing, you you are um, so parallelizing is is having to is having an execution execution in parallel. So if you guys look at the diagram, it's what you're doing is you have you have uh, you know you parallelize the five. Typically, we just have one. This is this is one create statement, but you parallelize it. So that means that you have five statements that have been that have been executed. And then just think about it. If you have a uh, if you have a if you have a um a multi-node environment, uh, where basically you don't we don't want to have to go to those individual nodes uh, 
there is this statement push can do is you, you would just parallelize the statement from one node and then what you're going to have is you're going to have that statement just sort of bump off into other nodes and you're going to have the, the different um, data sets being dispersed from one node to the next that's the benefit of uh, of of, per, per, of of using um, of parallelizing your your uh, your, uh, your statements and another other tip to consider uh, basically in terms of your application uh, if you um if you have an application uh, that's not that's not scanning out uh, again if it, if it's not working well with the process that you have. Uh, whichever whichever process number sixteen thirty two or two four, uh, and you think that oh uh, it's a, it's only for a single node and maybe I'll be, I should be able to scale it out to you know um, to basically have it be part of my rack environment. It's not gonna it's not gonna well, it's not gonna uh, work that way. So basically, what I'm trying to say is that uh, if you have a, if you have a functional a functional single node configuration. Then that's going to lead to a functional rack node configuration. But if you have an, if you have a, a dysfunctional or a, a uh, or a non-functioning single node configuration, that's going that's going to lead to a non-functional, dysfunctional uh, rack node rack uh, rack, rack, rack configuration. So basically, uh, start with one node, configure it well, and then and then basically you be able to scale it out to um, to uh, have more nodes um, to to eventually just uh, uh, have a, a rack. In that configuration, um, you know, based off what I know of, of that that that, uh, that, um, that instance, and also another tip is to avoid um, using a large number of rows uh, per block. What's what I'm going to do is basically um, it can lead to a hot table. Uh, I'm going to cover that concept later on. Uh, again, what you want to do is you want to increase the number of blocks, and then again, um, in terms of the indexes, uh, this is a very important tip. Uh, you want to just um, uh, you want to uh, again. This it goes back to the reverse reverse uh, index ordering that I that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the reason why you're doing that is you actually um, you want to avoid um, basically um, having an index become too hot because of uh, too many inserts. But the downside is that if you were to go ahead and have a reverse ordering, then you would find yourself with a uh, in, an index that would lose the range scan um, ability. So you have to weigh you have to weigh uh, those that that um, you know that as an option, and then a, again uh, with sequences uh, you have to order them, and again you have to just monitor the cache size on individual nodes, and also uh, you have to be able to uh, you have to be able to partition uh, the data. Okay, not 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 be able to you, you must partition the data, you must partition the application, and you must partition the indexes. So by partition, by partition what uh, what I'm saying is that. Uh, you want to be able to uh, basically just have different um, different uh, segments. Uh, not, not, I don't want to say segment, but different um, different um, sort of like allocations for for these three items for the data, for the application, and for the indexes. Uh, that makes it better uh, for you, basically, in terms of when you when you're trying to um, you know let's say um, administer you know. Um, the data on uh, the data on uh, one node as opposed to another node, um, and also you know again with application it probably be something more on lines of a runtime for application, um, and also the last thing with indexes again it, again um, it's more what you're doing more of is you just you don't want to um, you know uh, not you don't you don't want to have like again the example that I mentioned that I mentioned earlier which is you know the, the you know the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the index becomes too hot. So you just want to partition the, all of the atoms and uh, again that's going to lead to uh, um, uh, optimal performance for your back, your back, uh, back environment. And then uh, again, uh, last thing is you want to have an ASM, uh, ASSM configured which is Automatic Segment Space Management. Um, and if you do not have a, um, if you do not have uh, automatic uh, ASSM configured or uh, as a configuration, not as a configuration, but if you don't have that in network, then what you have to do is to do it manually, you would have to use an auto table shrink space statement. And uh, again, it's probably going to get um, it's probably going to get um, very uh, cumbersome in the end if you if you just do it manually. Uh, it's highly it's highly um, you're highly encouraged to um, to just to just have it done, you know. Just set this parameter to auto, 
in your in your um, in your system. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. Uh, these are just some of the tips uh, on performance tuning, and I hope to see you guys next time.